Hello and welcome to this tutorial video about how to tie a pattern. We will start by adding a garment to our scene that has no knot and we may make pattern changes that, so that we can apply the knot. So open your library. Uh, in my case, in my material tab, I have already prepared a project file. And as you can see, the project is already simulated on the avatar. Double click on the project file to load the file and you will see that it is already a complete outfit. Also if you rotate around your garment you get an impression of how it's set up and what we would like to do is we would like to manipulate the file and the pattern so that we can achieve this effect that we can see here on the image. So let's start. I will start by making changes to the pattern in 2D in order to be able to tie the knot. Before we start, let me close the library as your work's surface will become bigger through this. Then we want to extend the hem part of the front panels. And in order to do so, we will have to add a point on the hemline that we can later on drag down. So I will choose the Add Point Split Line tool, shortcut X, and then hover over the line. You see there's numbers indicating how you're gonna split the distance, but for us it doesn't matter as we then gonna drag it down. So just click anywhere. And as a next step, now we wanna move this point downwards. So we will have to switch the tool and we will select the edit pattern tool, shortcut set, select the point and then drag it downwards. In order to change the straight lines now to more curved shape, we will have to switch the tool to the edit curve point tool. With this tool, you can click on a line and you can create a curve point. A curve point are the red points that you now see on the pattern outlines. And then you can drag and drop this point to the desired location. So first of all, click on the pattern outline and now move it. And now you can do the same thing for the second line. Now, after adjusting the pattern, uh, it's still a bit distorted. This will be solved later. We would like to freeze the rest of the pattern pieces as we're only working with the front panels. So for this, I will now choose the transform pattern tool. And with the help of this tool, I can now select all pattern pieces except the front panels. Draw a box around all pattern pieces and with shift press down, I can deselect the ones that I don't want to freeze. I right click on one of the selected pattern pieces and choose the freeze command in the right click menu. While rotating around, you can see that the back and the sleeves have been frozen and we can now work with the front. There's still some adjustments that we can do to make the simulation easier. As you can see on the top left, the simulation quality is still set to fitting complete. And when this is selected, it is, so to say, at the high resolution level. And we can change it now back to normal. When you now select both of the front panels with shift press down and we go to the property editor, then we can see that the particle distance is currently set to five. This is because with the dense mesh, it's easier that the pieces don't 
get stuck in each other, but it is also slower. So now, for our first work process in the simulation, we would like to make use of the speed, and therefore we will set it up to 15. So once you have set the particle distance to 15, start the simulation by clicking on the arrow or hitting the spacebar, and you will see the, the pieces nicely come out of the legs from the outer. Now we can see the changes we made to the pattern simulated in 3D. Um, now, when I zoom in, I still want to make some additional changes to the shape of the curve. And I can do this by going back to my Edit Curve Point tool that allows me to move the points. And then also by clicking on another location, I can add multiple points. And by adding a few more points, we can make this more natural. And I will do this same procedure also for the pieces on the back. Uh, you see, you can add multiple points and thereby define the shape of your curve pretty precisely. Once you're happy with the result, just hit the simulation button and see your results in 3D. Before we can start tying the knot, we should still look at the properties of our pattern pieces in the property editor. When you select both of the pattern pieces, you will see that the collision of the selected pattern piece is still set to one when it is in high res mode. So if the collision between two pattern pieces is set to such a low value, it is very likely that the pattern pieces entangle themselves. Therefore, it is recommended to change this to a higher value. In our case, we will now change it to 10 for the process while we're tying the knot. After we have raised the collision to 10, we can now move on to the next step. Uh, when we want to tie a knot, we will use pins. There's always two ways how to place pins on a pattern piece. You can do it by using the pin box tool. Then you can drag open a box and select a larger area and fill it with pins. The second option is that you stay in your select move tool and by holding down the W key on your keyboard you can click on a pattern piece and it will place the pin at the location where you clicked. So it's recommended to use the pin box tool if you want to fix larger amounts and move larger amounts or you can use the default tool and press down W if you only want to move points. I will now delete the pins that I placed for this demonstration. Uh, you can do so by right clicking on one of your pins and you find two commands, delete selected pin or delete all pins. There is an even easier way, so if you press Ctrl and W, you delete all pins by shortcut. I will now continue with uh, the Select Move tool and place the pins by using uh, pressing down my W key and place the pin on both sides. Now it's important that the simulation is started and now you can move the pins around in the 3D window. You can simply move a pin by using drag and drop, but you can also make use of the gizmo. Normally, for pattern pieces, the gizmo never appears when you have the simulation turned on. But for pins, you will have the option to move pattern pieces with the gizmo. As the pin is quite small, it can be easier to use the yellow square to drag and move the point. I will now use the blue axis to turn the pin outwards 
and then use the yellow square to raise one pin up to the hem level. I will do the same now for the other side, so move it outwards on the blue axis and use the yellow square to bring them up to almost equal height and by changing the view then moving it below the first pattern so that they overlap when I look at it from the top. When looking at the current status it can sometimes be easier if the opening where you want to thread one of the fabric ends through is a bit bigger. So what you can do here is you can create two pins on the left and on the right and with the help of the gizmo move them to the side so that it's easier to thread it through. As a next step select one of the pins on the tip and rotate your view accordingly to bring it first downwards then look at it from the side move it backwards and then the goal is to bring it up again through the opening that we have just created. Just remember to adjust the view frequently and find the correct axis on which to grab the gizmo. Once I have pulled up one end like this I can start to delete the pins on the sides by pressing down the W key on my keyboard. It's just important that you click precisely on the pins so then they disappear and now as a next step try to pull the two ends away from each other so that you can uh, close the knot more tightly and this will always involve a bit of going back and forth pulling a bit on different ends but just try to adjust the knot nicely and tightly Just also always make sure to not only check it from the front but also from the side that you can see that they're actually far apart from each other and then bring the pins also a bit closer to the body again. When you zoom in a bit more closely and you already have a good result, you can make it even more uh, tight knit by adding pins to the sides. So once again, if you press W and keep it pressed down, you can click on a pattern piece and create a pin. And you see that you can always pull a bit more. We have a collision value set to one, so there's little chance that they will so to say interfere. Now when you look at the result that you've created you have now the first knot and we would like to add a second knot on top of that one. So for the fine tuning we will uh, deal with this later but first we will engage in doing the second knot. So what I want to do now is I want to fix the area that I have already knotted. So this area should be fixed and we can use the pin box tool for this to draw open a box and make sure it stays in place when we start the simulation. Select the tool, draw open a box over this area, you see the pins marked in orange appearing, switch back to the select move tool and with W press down you can delete the single pins that we've placed before. After this, you do the same process one more time.
once you've tied the second knot just make sure to bring the pins a bit closer to the avatar and when you look at it from the front spread them out evenly and at the same height and try to now tighten the knot a bit more by pulling in order to simulate now the first knot we've created and the second knot together we will have to delete the pin area that we've placed. So you do this by selecting it and right click delete selected pins. And now if you want to tighten it a bit more, you once again place pins to the right and to the left close to the knot by pressing down the W key and pull them a bit apart. So this makes sure that everything is tightly connected. And then as a next step, we can delete the pins on the outer fringes. When we have a look at our knot now, we can see it looks still quite rough. It's due to the fact that the particle distance is still uh, quite high. And you can also see that the collision is that we set to 10 millimeters is still causing like these gaps. And uh, we can basically look through the knot. And now, step by step, we would like to enhance the quality of the garment. So as a first step, I will select both of my front pattern pieces and then lower the particle distance down to five just to increase the mesh density. And quickly simulate to see the changes applied. As we now want to tighten the knot a bit further, I will also set pins closer to the net. So on the left and on the right, I, with my W key pressed down, I place a pin. And with the W key pressed down, I also delete the pins that's a bit further out. Now, before I start the simulation, I would like to decrease the collision that we have set from one millimeter to 10 millimeters at the very beginning. And I will not go down directly from 10 to 1. So I will go down in steps to avoid the pattern pieces, so to say, clashing into each other. Uh, and yeah, in order to do so, we will just select both of the front pattern pieces by holding down Shift. And then you find the additional thickness collision line in your property editor, type in nine, hit enter, and then press the spacebar to start the simulation. And now we allow the two fabrics to come closer to each other, stop the simulation again, and lower it to the next value, to eight. Same procedure again, start the simulation. And we will go on to seven. When you now observe the process, you will see that the holes are getting smaller. So the knot gets tighter. It's because we lowered the collision between the fabrics. Um, you can always select the pins and also readjust them a bit. So drag them to the side and um, so to say tighten your knot.
You can always add more pins when you think you need additional pins. After you adjusted your knot uh, once more, I will now go back to lowering the collision down in one millimeter increments. So I go to six millimeter, I start the simulation, let it sink. As a next step, I will go down to five millimeter. And I will do this all the way down to three millimeter to make sure that the knot can really come closely together. And when you hover around, you will see that now there's almost no space between the knot and it looks already quite uh, natural. And now as a next step, I would select the pins and delete them, or you just use the control W as a shortcut and you see that the edges can now drape more naturally. When you start the simulation and the fabric drapes, there's also the risk that the knot will untie itself. So I recommend with a W key press down to place pins in locations where you want to fix the knot permanently. And then you just continue to start the simulation and let it sink. And once it has draped and stopped moving too much, you can then stop the simulation. And normally we would work in a particle distance of five and that will be the final particle distance for um, a garment. But in this case, we want to have more defined wrinkles and really fine wrinkles. So we can lower the particle distance of the pattern pieces that are connected to the knot even lower. It will slow down the simulation. So it's important to only lower it for the pattern pieces that is really necessary. Go to the property editor and lower the particle distance to three, for example, start the simulation and see the changes applied. And now as the mesh has become even denser, we can decrease the collision a bit further. For a project like this with a knot, you cannot directly change the collision in bigger steps so we will have to go in small steps downwards. So I start with 2.5, simulate, then as a next step, with two. And then lower it to 1.5, which will be the final value for this knot. Now, when you zoom in closer, the knots are a lot tighter. There is no space in between. And it is also true that the pins are now hiding somewhere in the knot and you cannot see them. So here, use the shortcut, Control W to delete the pins on the inside and start the simulation to simulate the drape of the knot. Once we have now completed the tying of the knot, we can work on improving the 
whole completeness of the garment. So normally I would always use the high res garment button, open the dialog window by clicking on the icon and you want to change the simulation quality to fitting accurate fabric to get a more realistic drape of the fabric. And this can be done here in this menu, but as you made many changes to the settings of your pattern pieces, this can always be a bit risky. So in this case, I will choose the second way and I will change the simulation directly up at the simulation arrow. And as we have now changed the simulation properties, it is recommended to fix the area of the knot with the set of pins as it could otherwise untangle itself. Choose the pin box tool, draw open your box and fix this area. After the area is fixed, start the simulation to apply the simulation properties. And then stop again after you have seen that your fabric has re-draped. Right click on your pin area and delete it. And you can switch back to the select move tool. And we have now finished the process of creating a knot on our garments. Now as a last step, we can now unfreeze the parts that we froze before. And you could do this by simply clicking on each individual pattern piece, but you can also use Ctrl and A to select all pattern pieces, right click on one of them and choose the unfreeze command in the right click menu and this will unfreeze all pattern pieces at once. So now we've completed the garment. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial video and good luck with your projects.